Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush. And as you can see by our environment and my controllers, we're not actually starting in Tilt Brush at all. Today is the final episode using Blocks by Google. Now, Blocks is a program made by Google as a partner program to Tilt Brush. This one is for actually making 3D model primitives that we can then export and import and share around uh, as base pieces for using in Tilt Brush. Now, we can also use these pieces in actual 3D modeling programs like Blender and things like that. So, we can quickly use this program to build pieces to use in other places. Now, the previous episodes was all about building these pieces. This episode is about saving and sharing the pieces. So, we talked about it a little bit in some of the previous episodes, but this one we're really going to focus in on taking these pieces and sharing them with other programs, sharing them with people online, and exchanging our blocks models for use in other programs. So we're going to dive back in. Let me undo all these pieces. So the, piece, the project we were building before, I'm going to use my command button on the command controller to find those pieces we saved before. Now we've seen how when you're working with a model, and you've got the pieces you want together and the shape you want and the configuration you want, the little floppy disk button allows you to save your work. Now, we had both save and publish. Publish is what puts it on the internet on the poly.google.com website, and that allows anybody else to use your model and even change and make the model. And we'll talk about publishing in just a moment. But as far as just saving it for your own work, for your own private use, save lets you save it locally on your device. Or save it on the internet in your Poly account, but don't make it public. Keep it private just for you. So save locally saves it onto the local device. If you're connected to a PC computer, sort of like I am with my index through Steam, it's going to save it in my documents folder. And when we switch over to the other program, we're actually going to look at those files and folder structures. But if you're on a PC, it saves it always in the same place when you choose save locally. On another device like the Quest, if you use the Quest Oculus Link, then you're connected to a PC and it's just like all the other PC stuff. If you're not connected to a PC, but you just have a regular tethering device, let me grab my tethering device here, then you would need to make sure you are connected and logged in to the internet, your Google account, your Poly account. That way your, your headset can then save it onto the internet. So you do need to be connected with your standard controlling device. So let me get this out of the way and back into the controls. So I've created the model I want. I've got it the way I like it. I save this work. If you publish, it's public. If you just regular save, it's still private. This is especially important for somebody who's a professional artist who wants to be doing this for a particular private project. A regular save keeps it private, whereas publish makes it public to everybody. So I'm going to do both with this. I'm going to call this Castle Bonsai, and I'm going to both save locally to my Steam computer, and I'm going to do a publish to the internet so anybody else can use this. Now that I've got this and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to switch over to Tilt Brush, a different program. Now that I've created this with blocks and I've chosen save or publish, Either way, I can now use this elsewhere. So I'm going to switch over to Tilt Brush, but we're also going to talk about Blender and other 3D programs and how I can use these creations in those other places. So our other lessons are about building the model. This lesson is about using this model in other places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Tilt Brush. So if we get ready, let me get you out of the way here. We're going to get ready. I'm going to switch over to Tilt Brush. Ready? And we're now in Tilt Brush. So we've taken these models we made in blocks. 
Now we're in a different 3D program and we're going to look at how we can share that model between these different programs. If you use your online account through Google using poly.google.com, I'm going to spell that out, poly.google.com, it's going to have a copy of all of your models that you can use, a regular save will keep them private so only you can use them. But a publish makes it public here. So anybody can use your model and even do something called remix to share it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at if you do choose to use poly, this is how it's going to look. It's going to have a picture of your model. Let's get this up a little bit and move you down. It's a picture of your model and you can give it a custom name and any settings. Things like visibility. If you want to keep it private, you can change that through the Poly website to unlisted. So only people you share it with are allowed to use it. By making it public, anybody can see it and use it in their own art. The term remix down here. Do you want to let somebody else change it? Add more towers, move things around. Usually, remixing is good. People can use that as a starting point and then change it the way they want, dress it up for their own particular situation. So this is the interface that Polly uses for your models. And whether or not you want to allow people to use it or not is up to you. I can get this out of the way now. So Polly is the public way to save to, to share this stuff. Now it will require logging into the Google website. So if you're using a tethered device like the Oculus Quest, you will need to be connected to your controlling app. If you're using a Windows device connected by headset to a computer, it's also going to need to open the Google website the very first time you do this. So you will need to sign in with an account. You'll actually need to take off the headset, sign in. If you use two-factor, it may even ping your cell phone. But that's to make sure your headset has permission to use your account. Once you've got that connected, you can share those pieces. I could now actually log into my Poly. So here we are in our things, and I'm actually going to go into my options and the Poly library. And ideally, under my models, it should have that particular piece. And here's the piece that I created. Let's make it a little bigger, that type of thing. So this is shared publicly through the Poly library, meaning anybody else can use it for themselves. And it will show up if you are logged in on your connection device, whether it's a computer or a phone, that's going to give you access to the pieces that you have published on Poly. Public pieces. Now, if you didn't make it public, you just did a save. Again, if you saved to Google, the cloud, you would still need to log in and connect, but that would be one way to access your models. Likewise, if you chose save locally, now it's saved on the device itself. A Quest, whether it's on the app or on the device, or on a Steam, a Windows computer, it's now saved on your computer. On most computers, whatever you use for your documents folder, oops, documents folder, it's also going to make a folder for blocks. And it's going to keep everything we save locally in this folder. It's actually got its own model library, and we'll actually look at the folder structure. But by saving it locally, not only can we use it in blocks, but now I can take it and move it to Blender move it to Tilt Brush, share these pieces we've created with these other programs. So that's what we're going to look at now. Now that I've saved our work, how can we use this in other places? Now, most programs like Tilt Brush and Blender have specific folders you want to keep these in. So when I save this in blocks, if we're on a Windows computer, it's actually going to go into your Documents folder and make a folder called blocks. So in my documents, we've got blocks here. Move that folder forward so you can see it. 
And in there is where it's making its models. And it saves everything in here. Each time you save, it's going to make a different folder to keep things in. Now, by itself, it just uses random letters and numbers for that name. So it, it can quickly, easily make a whole bunch of different ones. Once you've got those folders created, inside that folder, let me get this out of the way here, inside that folder is where we have the model files themselves. Now, Blocks is nice. It knows that there are a lot of different 3D programs that use different file types. Blender, for example, likes OBJ files. Other programs for the textures use a materials file. So Blocks actually makes all these things automatically in that folder. So no matter what 3D program you use, you've got the pieces you need to take these blocks into that program. Tilt Brush does not need all of these. It actually only needs like three of them. So I could just grab these three files if I know the files I need. If I don't know which files I need, maybe I'm still new with Blender so I don't know which ones it wants, I could grab the whole folder, get all of the files, and move them all into the place that they need to be for Blender or for whichever program I want to use. Since I want to use Tilt Brush, Tilt Brush also makes its own folder in Documents. So now that I've got this in place, I'm going to actually open up the Tilt Brush folder and move these things in there. So here's my Tilt Brush folders, and I'm actually going to make a folder for Castle Bonsai. Let me get into screen so you can see me here. So Castle Bonsai in the Tilt Brush model library. Do make sure you're putting this in the right place. In Tilt Brush, it's got the folder in Documents. Oops, that's a little too much here. It's got the folder in Documents called Tilt Brush. Model Library, not only your reference images, but these custom models go in here as well. So it's got both an Images folder and the Models folder. Here is where I make a Castle Bonsai folder. Here is where I'm going to put, let's see if I can grab it from here, all of those files. Now, some programs, as long as they're in the same folder, it doesn't care what the file names are. Some programs do want consistency. So, for example, for Tilt Brush, in its models folder, I called it Castle Bonsai. So I'm going to use that same name for the components. Tilt Brush does not need all of the components. As I said before, it only needs about three of them. But this allows you to use whatever files your program needs, whether it's Blender or Unity or Tilt Brush. We make this folder with all the pieces we need, and in my case, we're giving it all the same name. So when I open it in Tilt Brush, it knows how to identify and use these pieces. Usually the GT, excuse me, GLTF and the OBJ files are the ones that the 3D programs need. The MTL file, usually the materials file, is for textures and things. Blocks doesn't really do textures, but that's what applies the red to the roof, that type of stuff. So when we load in the model, it will have some basic colors. PNG or JPEGs are usually the thumbnail, a quick small picture of your model so other people can see what it is before they use it. So this is just a matter of copy and paste. Copy from the Blocks folder, paste into the Tilt Brush folder, and then rename the files so that everything's going to be nice and consistent. Now that I've done all that, let's clear everything out, and I'm going to log in. Make sure you are signed in if you want to use the internet. If you're just using local files, you don't actually need to sign in because it's using files in your local Windows or Oculus Quest account.
We'll actually have a link in the comments below. So if you're a Quest user, we'll look at the file structure you use for the Quest. It's just very long and complicated, not something I've got uh, memorized that I can write out here. So we're going to stick with Windows using Documents, Tilt Brush, Model Library, Models. When I'm signed in, if I want to use the online, the saved version, the poly library takes me to the public versions. Poly library, I'm signed in, so under my models, your models, it'll have that piece we made. Now, this is the public published version. It only shows up here if you choose publish. I'm going to grab you and throw you away. Grab you and throw you away. So, if you did not publish, if you're a private model, you saved locally, from here, I'm going to go into the three dots, more options. If you're using the beginner mode, we don't have all those same options. I'm going to go back to advanced mode, so we've got more options, which includes the labs. The labs is where you access local files, whether it's on the Quest or in uh, Windows. Labs, more options, labs, has the pieces we need. Now in this section, on a local PC, local media library, this option here, local media library, that accesses your local documents folders. Local Media Library. We're going to put that up here. Bring this over here. Now, in Local Media Library, we've got both models and images. Images are your local pictures, reference images. That's how I got my folder options. Models, we're now loading in that folders in Tilt Brush slash Model Library slash Models. These are the pieces. Built in, coming with it, is Andy for Android, as well as Tiltosaurus, the, the uh, T-Rex. But it will also have your custom models as well. When I choose Castle Bonsai... Here is that model from my models folder locally. So if I make changes to that, it won't change Tilt Brush, but if I reload the model, it'll be the newest version. Now, in that folder, there were the different versions, the OBJ, the GLTF. If your program can use more than one, it may show up more than once. You'll notice this version kept the red of the roofs using the materials, whereas this one is all silver, no extra materials. Slightly different version of the same model. So if you're using Blender or Unity or any other 3D program, make sure you know what type of model you want to use. But now that I've got it in my system here, I can use this as a base. So I can blow this up, now I'll get some green ivy, Green ivy, and I'll make uh, ivy growing down the sides and dangling from the towers and that kind of stuff. This is an old ancient cow, or maybe I'll paint in a stone texture, that type of thing. But now that I've got this model, I've got this piece that I can use. For Quest users, the model takes up much less resources than if I painted it here in, t in Tilt Brush from scratch. So I can use this as a way to get, let me grab it here. I can use this as a base to build a larger picture and get more in the picture on a quest before I hit the dreaded low memory warning. Or on a PC, I could build up a picture out of many of these pieces. Now I'll bring in some horses and some mountains. So rather than painting everything from scratch, I'll get the bases, basic pieces in place quickly and then go in the brush and add details, add cosmetics, make it unique. So I'll start with a castle and I'll make one castle over here. I'll make it the good guy's castle. Then I'll go and I'll get another copy of the same model and put it over here, and I'll dress it up different as the bad guy's castle, starting from the same base, but now I can add cosmetics, let's get rid of these pieces, to dress it up as much as I want. 
Now do bear in mind, the more pieces you add, the harder it's gonna be on your system. In my case, I've got a fairly medium system and I'm also doing streaming, so I'm getting a little bit of jitter on this end. But once you've got those pieces saved, whether they're saved locally for private use or published for public use, once I've got these pieces made, I can now use them in the different programs, whether it's Blender or Tilt Brush, and build up from these starting points. Now, the nice thing with Poly and public sharing is there's all kinds of stuff out there. So if I want a horse, I don't have to make one. I can look on Poly, Poly Library. Let me get to my controls here. Poly Library and see if I can find horses, that type of thing. If I do it on the internet, I can then, you know, on a normal browser, I can then like the models and quickly and easily find them from here. I'm getting a little jitter here, so I can get rid of one of these castles. But that's the whole point of creating these in blocks by Google and now sharing them between programs, between artists over the internet, whatever you want to use them for. Remixing allows you to make changes to existing ones, or you can just keep working on your own and updating it and resaving it and republishing it under new forms as often as you like. So have fun with these. Use these as a base for your tilt brush projects so that you can then use these. Oops, I pinned it in place. Uh, but you can use these things any way you want and get really creative in building them or go through the poly library and find some really fun models to use as a base of your own. But this episode is all about saving and exchanging models that you make in blocks by Google. So I hope this was helpful for you. This was a lot of fun to do, and there's a million different blocks models out there for you to play with. So log on and download and try them out and see what cool things you can make. Let us know in the comments if you've got questions or if things aren't working right. Tell your friends, share these videos so that more people can start making more models for more people to use. Especially now since it's Inktober 2019, there's a lot of good stuff being put up all the time. So check out what you might enjoy playing with and give it a try. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Teaching Tilt Brush. Have fun and we'll see you in following lessons. Have fun tilting. <laughs>